Hello and welcome once again to The Voluntarist. Today we'll be talking about a question that was asked to me by a self-described communist. Uh, the question goes, um, basically, how would you prevent the state from coming back if uh, somehow you got rid of it in society? So there were some questions about uh, would it be permissible to use force to prevent state from coming back uh, since uh, so many voluntarists and AMCAPs make the argument that the state is a coercive entity and it, it uses force and it's immoral? Would it be ethical in that case to preemptively, keyword preemptively, use force to prevent uh, the creation of a state? And so um, I, I took a step back and I said, okay, state... The state is not a good thing. Um, we've seen, and this, this is a commonly cited statistic, in the 20th century, a quarter billion people were murdered um, through democide, which is when a state or a, a nation state kills people for political purposes. Political killings. Um, look that up. I think it's got its own wiki page for that statistic. Uh, it's an interesting read. And... So uh, there's there's a fair case, a, a pretty strong case, why force would be uh, acceptable in these circumstances. But then we we take a strong look, we take the strong stance on non-aggression principle, and we say you can never initiate force. So until the state is created and violating people's rights who have not consented to its control, it's wrong to initiate force against anybody. So let me throw out an example here. Um, let's say we have achieved the stateless society like the question assumes, and a few people come along and say, hey, being free sucks. We want to we wanna be coerced and subjugated to the will of a few elected people again. And like, great, what an awesome idea. <laughs> you are awesome. So this guy sits down and he writes on a piece of paper we the people blah 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 and all that stuff and eventually you have a state well there there's a few questions that need to be asked who is the state um controlling at this point uh for this example we'll say that the state is only uh it only has a jurisdiction over the few founding members right the fe the people who actually signed their names to the document who created the state, they want to be subjected to state control and all those regulations. They probably are totally fine with it because they're the ones who founded it. They're probably the ones writing the rules. But nonetheless, they're the only people who are being subjected to the state at this point. There's nothing wrong with this yet. Uh, they consented. They are getting what they consented to. Uh, there is no violation of the non-aggression principle present. Or uh, the moral theory of obligatory inaction, or or uh, that thing that I'm working on. There's no um, violation of that yet. But then, however, if we, if we move a little further in time, and the state begins to uh, start applying its coercive power to people who have not consented yet, uh, i.e. the children of the first citizens, or perhaps even the neighbors of the, of the citizens who have consented, um, kind of like um, an annexation of the surrounding lands, expanding its borders to people who haven't had the, the opportunity to consent yet, just saying, hey, we're the new gang in town, you owe us rent or protection money, i.e. taxes. Uh, just expanding its borders to people who don't want anything to do with it, that is a violation of the non-aggression principle. Because those people have not granted consent to be governed. Um, and this is, of course, one of the, the many problems with the social contract theory. It's like, we as a group, as a collective, consent to the state. Well, no, I personally don't consent, but I don't have a choice, because if I don't do what the state says, they'll come and put me in prison. Right, so there's there's that little problem. Um, of course, this is this is uh, morality kind of getting tossed out the window because there's a gun to your head. And this th these are the kinds of ethical problems that um, having a 
coercive monopoly on the use of force creates in society. So uh, ultimately, my answer is the creation of a state isn't immoral because we're not uh, the non-aggression principle is not a preemptive strike kind of thing. Uh, an action is either the initiation of force or it is not. Um, and the creation of a state to govern those who consent to its control is not the initiation of force. Uh, expanding to people who have not consented, that is the, initi- the initiation of force. And that's, uh, that's ultimately how I responded. Um, but then uh, he came back, well, a different person came back. I think uh, the guy who originally asked the question is just kind of enjoying watching the exchange. Um, an ANCAP came in and had a problem with the way that I answered. And I said, um, I, I said, quote, I don't see an ethical way to force people not to form a state for the reasons that I've just described. And uh, the ANCAP comes in and says, do you see an ethical way to force people not to commit murder? And of course, uh, he's kind of drawing this line of reason from the state to murder. And I mean, this is... Um, not altogether illogical, uh, given the current form of nation states that we have today and have existed all throughout history. Um, so I, I understand what he's trying to say, or at least I thought I did. Um, I, th- I think it was pretty accurate. But I came back and I said, uh, you don't force people not to commit crimes. This is with respect to his question about murder. Um, you just punish them once they've committed the crime, thus creating a deterrent. That's kind of how it's always worked, right? You don't you don't um, shoot someone to defend uh, their murder victim, you know, like next week. Like you, you don't. We don't have mind control, and even if we did, um, I think it would be highly unethical to use it. That be a massive invasion of privacy. You'd have. You'd scan everyone, scan everyone's brains. Nah, let's let's not do that. That's sci-fi stuff, but who knows? It might be possible someday, and that'll be a massive ethical question whenever that technology comes around. But today, we don't have that kind of technology, and it's not okay to um, punish people for crimes they haven't committed yet. Uh, so that's that's how I treated his question about murder um, and voluntarily subjecting yourself to the power of the state is perfectly permissible, and I I gave him the spiel again. And he comes back uh, once more and says that his point was that if a state, or that if it is a state, then it's necessarily violating someone's rights, because that's what a state is, in italics, by definition. Uh, Colon, a person or group of people who violates others' rights. And that's kind of that's kind of like a roundabout definition. It's not quite what a state is, though I would agree with that definition most of the time. Um like in practice that's what a state is. So he says, so the state is using force against people, but you are not willing to use force to stop the state. And of course, I've I've talked about self defense on this channel before. I I believe I did a, a video, the volunteer's perspective with that unfortunate jazz music that I chose as the background. <laughs> I wish I could go back and change it, but I I just I don't want to. And what's done is done. <laughs> but you're stuck with the jazz music. I'm sorry. Go and watch that video if you're curious about either what I'm talking about or the jazz music in the background. Um. Hopefully that's not the one with the jazz music. I eventually stopped during the Volunteer's Perspective series. But uh, I said, yeah, I said, that is an interesting point. Um, Self-defense, even against something like the state, is permissible, but it's not obligatory. I believe that rational discourse and rhetoric are the best tools at our disposal to combat tyranny. And violence against the state will only result in death and hatred between two or more warring factions. This is not a recipe for sustainable freedom. And then I said, ultimately, a strong, stateless society must emerge 
through peaceful, voluntary means as an example to the rest of the world, then it's my hope that people with this new information will grow increasingly skeptical of state control. And that's that's where I've left it for now. Uh, this conversation might continue, but I wanted to share it with you guys um, because it is a, a, an interesting concept. Um, once we do achieve a stateless society, how do we keep it stateless? And the answer is to out-compete nation states. Out-compete them. Be better. Show the rest of the world that a booming economy and massive job opportunity and upward mobility is possible when you get the state out of the way. Show them through technologies like cryptocurrency and all sorts of crazy stuff that's going to come around when we actually have real freedom. Show the rest of the world that the state is not just unethical, but irrelevant, unnecessary, and just needs to be reduced to a sad little footnote in history. All right, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.